Okay. A firefighter is standing 50 meters away from a building, <coughs> holding a hose. He's directing the stream of the water at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The speed of the water as it comes out of the hose is 40 meters per second. At what height will the water hit the building? Now, um, this is going to be relative to however high the firefighter is holding the hose. So how much higher than the hose level will the water be hitting the building? <coughs> so rough sketch. Here's the building. Our firefighter is holding a hose. Water is coming out of the hose at 40 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. So the water, does it follow a nice straight line? No. no. Because of the acceleration of gravity, it does not follow a nice straight line. Instead, it follows a parabolic trajectory. Okay. Now, I don't really know if the water is going to peak before it hits the building or not. It doesn't really matter if it does or not. We'll still be able to figure out how high on the building the water hits relative to the hose height. Now we're ignoring drag. Even though the problem doesn't say to ignore drag, we are ignoring drag. We will continue ignoring drag for quite some time. So, the acceleration in the horizontal direction, A sub X, will be what? What will its value be? Zero. Zero. There's nothing, once the water has left the hose, there's nothing pushing it horizontally, nothing pulling on it horizontally. There's nothing to speed the water up or slow it down horizontally. There's no acceleration in the x direction. The y direction, on the other hand, gravity. We have the acceleration of gravity. We can't get rid of gravity. The acceleration of gravity points downwards, so negative has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. The acceleration is constant. It's constantly zero in the x direction and it's constantly negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the y direction. That means we can use our kinematic equations. So we're going to approach this similarly to the way we approach the others. Let's write down our variables that show up in the kinematic equations. The difference is we're going to have two lists. One list for the x information, one list for the y information. Time is the only thing they share. Time is the only thing they have in common. So I'm only going to write time once. If you want, you can put time in both columns. Just remember it's the same for both of them. It's up to you. <coughs> okay. Similar to the problems we've done before, we need to choose an origin. Some place to measure our position from. Let's go ahead and do it where it's starting. So this where it's coming out of the hose. The location is leaving the hose. <coughs> Let's say that is the origin. That will make the initial x and the initial y both zero. We know the final x. How far does it end up horizontally? 50 meters. We're looking for the final y. That's what we want. Initial velocity. We need to find the x component of the initial velocity and the y component of the initial velocity. The initial velocity is 40 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. So what is the x component? Right, so 40 meters per second times the cosine of 30 
will be our x component, 40 meters per second times the sine of 30 will be our y component. So our x component is 34.64 meters per second. Our initial y velocity is 20 meters per second. So we have our components. Both of them are positive according to the way we've drawn our picture. The water is going to the right and up. So both are positive. Final velocity. This is the velocity, basically we call it the impact velocity. It's, uh, how fast it's going as it crashes into the wall, basically. How fast will it be moving in the horizontal direction? Fabulous. Why do we know that? Right, there's no acceleration, there's nothing slowing it down or speeding it up, so it has to stay the same. We don't know the final y velocity. That's okay. We don't know the time, either. So thinking of our kinematic equations. Our kinematic equations are going to work for the horizontal information alone. The kinematic equations will work for the vertical information alone. We want y. There's two equations with y in it. Whoops, got the one out. There's that one. Oh my goodness. Apparently, I forgot a lot of things. There. So that's one of them. The other equation that has y in it is this one. But notice. This equation, we don't know time either. In this equation, we don't know the final velocity in the y direction either. So we don't know either one. Both equations, we have unknowns. So we need to find something another way. By the way, this third equation won't work because there's three unknowns. There's the same two unknowns, time and final velocity in the y direction. Sure. Let's use the x information to find time because the time it moves horizontally is the same time that it moves vertically. So let's go ahead in the x direction. We need to by use an equation, number one, that has time in it because we want time. So our two equations. two equations that have time in it. Which one would you like to use? <laughs> Only one of them will work. Only the one on top. As much as we like the shorter equation, why will it not work? If acceleration is zero, that whole term goes away. Time's gone. Which in turn tells us that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity. Which Useful, we know that. So this equation, not helpful. So we have to use the top one. We know the initial x position is zero. We know the initial velocity in the x direction. We know the acceleration. We know the final position. Acceleration is zero. So time is going to simply be the final position over the initial velocity in the x direction. So it will be 50 meters over our 34.64 meters per second. So we're only using the x information. It travels 50 meters horizontally. It's traveling 34.64 meters per second horizontally. So it's going to take 1.44 seconds for this water 
to travel 50 meters horizontally. It's going to take 1.44 seconds for the water to hit the wall as well. And again, as you're doing these problems, keep at least a couple decimal places, if not a couple more. Don't round until you get to a final answer. So now that we have the time, now we can come back to this equation. We know the initial y is zero. So our final position will be our initial velocity in the y direction, which is 20 meters per second, times our time, 1.44 seconds, plus the one half, our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, time squared, so 1.44 seconds squared. Plugging that all in. Get 18.6 meters, so approximately 19 meters. But that's 19 meters above the hose height. It's not necessarily above the ground. Unless the hose was laying on the ground, then it would be the ground. So 19 meters above the hose height is where the water hits. Okay.